and Beyblade is fun because it is a very, um, one of these sort of retro post-apocalyptic worlds um, where there's hidden technology and there's the sense that these beings, the Deathless, have been around for thousands of years and they lived in our world, but our world went through some sort of apocalypse and it's never talked about what that was. Uh, so one of the big things I got to do in the second book is I'm like, I'm gonna go and do a flashback sequence from our time or slightly near future and show the bridge that was coming here. Well, at the same time, I'm taking the characters, which I'll have to say they left in a pretty terrible situation. I don't want to spoil the second game for you guys, but things were pretty grim, and I'm like, I gotta get them out of this and like pro propel us forward in character arcs, because in a book I can do character arcs, when in a game there's not as much time for, um, for spending on the characters. The game's naturally gonna be focused on the action and the gameplay um, and the fun of it. You can work some things in, but the bulk of the, the character development lies upon me. And so the second book is this sequence of flashbacks mis mixed with the, the present time, bringing the characters to their sort of pushing toward their natural c conclusion um, as characters. We were still vo both kind of timid, like they didn't want to step on my toes, they're like, do whatever you want. And I'm like, no, I don't want to ruin your game. I, I need to, you know, and it, we, were, we were, were new at this. Neither of us had really collaborated in this way. They'd worked with, um, with Orson Scott Card on some things before, um, but you know, I hadn't done this and we hadn't actually let the book influence the game to this extent and things like this. And so we were, we were very timid. Um, and I think we grew much more comfortable as we worked through that, uh, that first book, and particularly after sending the first book in and then working on the script for the second game, that's where it got very collaborative. Um, where we're like, what if we did this? What, can you guys do this in the game? Is this working? If you do this, this is what I could do for the next book and things like that. And so it's evolved into a very, um, a very creative environment where what they say helps me be more creative and what I say gives them things to do in the game. Um, it's been a blast. What do you like about this Infinity Blade uh, world, this mythology that you're helping to craft? Um, I love this sort of half uh, a medieval world, half a futuristic world. It's something I've never done. Of course, it's, uh, it's been done in science fiction quite well. I love the sort of Shannara books, and this reminds me a little bit of those, which are one of my, you know, the classics of fantasy. Um, and the, the Anne McCaffrey's Pern books and things like this. This idea of a fallen culture um, that there is technology out there. But the fun thing we have going here that doesn't have, exist in any of those is you have these beings, these, um, these gods that have set themselves up that you approach in the games, you're like, these are just like these divine beings. But you learn they're people who have a lot of technology, which is a really fun concept to approach for me, is this dichotomy. Um, this blending of a science fiction and a fantasy uh, world into a, a single cohesive story.